Hi guys, Luke here of Simbox in association with Clint Patrick, and I'm delighted to be joined by Neil Marsh. How are you doing, Neil? Yeah, good, thank you. How's yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. So first and foremost, I appreciate your time. I know it's been very, very busy. Uh, you've had a lot of media requests and the fight bubble, absolutely hectic. Let's get straight into it. How's the atmosphere inside the bubble? Yeah, it's um, tasty. But, um, you know, like, a few things being made out at the moment, but it's like, this is a real, too many times there's false rivalries in life built up. This is a real, real, real hatred rivalry. Not hate, hate's a strong word, but it's a real strong rivalry with lots of bullshit, excuse me, language. Um, but, you know, so it's been a bit tasty, but I believe that uh, both camps have got a little bit of respect for each other um, on the back of it. So I think um, we've crossed that part and now it's down to the business side. So the atmosphere has been vibrant, but off other videos you've seen, we're buzzing. We're, we're ready. Our man's ready. So, you know, it's a, it's a good environment. I think that's the most exciting aspect of the fight, Neil, is that the camps are buzzing, the fighters are buzzing, the promoters, the Sky Sports are buzzing, the fans are buzzing. It's, it's almost like, a, like Christmas has finally come around. We've waited so long and it's finally here. That's the most important thing. You know, back in December 2018, it was first scheduled and now here we are in February 2021 and we're finally going to get the answer. And personally, in my opinion, I think it's a much better fight this time around. How do you see that? Yeah, um, it's been built a lot bigger. Um, you know, anything what, what keeps going and going and little obstacles and trip-ups, you know, like all the big, huge pay-per-views at same. And I know this isn't a big, huge pay-per-view by no means, but this has got the big fight feeling. And um, it has been cooked. It has been slowly cooked. I think Sky love it. I think the public love it, you know. So um, it, it's a genuine, real hard fight. And, you know, it, it's... There isn't that many of them knocking about, is there? And this is a real one. So we're excited for it. Absolutely. One of the, you know, I've got my list of questions that I wanted to go through, but something that came up fairly recently, Carl Greaves, he just put a picture up of, of David and he's, he said that he's on his fourth meal of the day. And this is the day before a weigh-in. It's absolutely unheard of. And given that, you know, there's the rumours and the speculation of Josh Kelly struggling at the weight, is that a bit of a, a prod that our guy's making the weight so well and we don't believe your guy's making it equally as well? You know, we know he won't be eating now. We know he'll be tight. And David is a model professional and he eats well. It, it isn't a diet to David. It's like some boxers like Josh, and not just Josh, and, you know, people have their own opinions. They, they go and pile a load of weight on and then they, they live the Chinese and the healthy, you know, the unhealthy stuff and, you know, they put a bit of weight. I can't call anyone. I, I love all the unhealthy stuff, but I'm not a professional athlete. Now, David, when he goes into camp and he eats his salads and, um, you know, all, all the white fishes and different things, that's what he does just normal day in, day out, even if he's not in camp. He, that's all he eats. He doesn't eat anything bad. So when we, when David makes weight, it's very easy, um, you know, and, and he's religious with it. So, you know, David's had four meals today and he's going to have another one in a bit before he goes to bed, you know, a little bit of protein and a few little carbs and... Um, and then he'll start dropping his weight. He'll just touch the scales and he'll be up again. So, you know, was it a dig? You know, they'll be looking at what we're doing. We're, we're looking at what they're doing. You know, they're looking at us. And it's, you know, they see you eating. We've seen parts of the team walking past looking at David thinking, how's he eating? We're eating because he's the ultimate professional with his diet, you know, with his lifestyle, not his diet. So, you know, it was a sort of a dig. But, you know, it's, it's a nice position to be in and to be able to do that. Certainly a nice position to be in. Uh, we mentioned Carl Greaves there, the trainer of David Avenisi. And how much credit do you think he deserves for the work that he's done with David and the, the run that he's put David Avenisi in? And, of course, the, the two wins out in Spain against Kermin Laraga and then knocking out Jose de Rio. And along with yourself, he's also took on the bulk of the social media work, the interviews and everything else, you and, and, and Carl have took on a lot of responsibility with that. So that, alongside the work he's done in camp, how much credit do you believe Carl Grieve deserves? Unbelievable. Now, you know, I and Carl won't mind me saying this, he's a little guy in boxing like I am. But we've we've formed a formidable team with others like Alan Levine and Eric Termer, um, which helps with the English. Um, but, but going on to Carl, he, he gives his life to David in camp, you know, has to pick him up, has to drop him off, 
um, everything, his meal, everything. He gives everything to her. And um, the bond they've got now is, is second to none. Um, I, I can't. You know, without Carl, this wouldn't have happened. You know, we've had a terrific journey. And, and the way Carl has conducted himself, he hasn't been given the credit in, in many aspects, uh, which he deserves. If you look at beating Shane Mosley in his backyard, Yes, an older guy, but with Roberto Duran in the, the corner, going beating um, Navarro in the interim world title in Monaco, two wins against Kerman Laranga in, in Bilbao, who'd been a Brit beater. You know, let's just say how it is. He demolished not just British kids, and full respect to the British kids, by the way, um, but he demolished everyone he'd been in with. And Carl's put a game plan together in each of them fights, and we've won. Some of our losses, like Peterson, he was nip and tuck. Mm -hmm. You know, he's competed at that top level. And um, this is one of the first times I've been asked this. Uh, unbelievable. Huge respect. So grateful of the effort he puts in. Makes my job easier. You know, logistically, I'm a couple of hours away from him. Um, but he does sort of a manager's role as well. And, you know, he proper, proper takes care of him for me. So big shout out for, uh, for Carl Greaves. Absolutely fantastic. Of course, we've mentioned... Already, Neil, that the fight was scheduled back in December 2018 and the bad blood between the teams manifested from there and then rumours of why the fight didn't take place back in December. We won't go into that. It's very well publicised and, you know, you don't need to trod in that path again. Uh, you spoke a lot about it recently, but a lot of confidence on both sides, without a doubt, is a lot of the confidence on your side, given the runner form that David's on, the, the level that he's competed at. Where do you base... The the hundred percent belief that you have equally, you know, Adam Booth and the guys over there have the equal amount of belief in Josh Kelly, of course. But you yourself, what what is it you base it on? Okay, um, I have done other interviews, so I'll try to keep the answers a little on the same subject, um, but give different variations. They're like a shorter variation, and it's like two thousand eighteen. He's you struggle at one four seven. He's grown two years older. They've done a boatload of strength training. His muscle mass is bigger. His bone structure is bigger. If anything, he'll struggle even more to make the weight. You, you add David's experience. You add the three of Josh's last uh, 10 round fights against 140 fighter in Campos, a slow paced Robinson, Polish kid who he, who he should comfortably win. He hasn't had an intense learning fight over them rounds where where he's been pushed and pushed and pushed. And David's a 12-round, ruthless, relentless animal, you know. And he's going to get took into a dark place in this fight, Josh. And he's going to get asked questions he's never, ever been asked in a ring before. So you throw all that in, then you throw the former David. You know, let's be honest, Josh's former stunk, you know. If you look at David, he's going to knock that anger out twice splattered um, Del Rios. And I know people say, oh, you should have done it, but I think he, he's had nine losses. He's only been KO'd twice, and one was David. You know, it was a durable opponent to get David eight, nine rounds, get him to stop him, make David look good to promote this fight. Kelly got given the similar opponent. I think Josh Taylor did the campus in two or something. And he, he laboured to, um, to a point win. So we collectively put it all. Then you add other things like David has been an away fighter. We've been America three times. We've been Spain twice, Monaco. We've been all around the world with David. Um, a lot of his pro fights in Russia, he was in the away corner. Um, I think after 10 fights, Kodzoev, who was 20 and all, uh, he got a draw with. And when David gets in that ring, he's like, let's go, it's business. But Josh is going to be a bag of nerves. You know, let's just say it how it is. He's going to be on pins. He's nervous. You would be. Davis will always have it. David will always have his nervous energy. Eh? But Josh will be, you know, I, I don't care what anyone well, says. To cut you off there, but do you think in that, that respect that that's because, there's, do you believe there's more pressure on Josh Kelly than there is uh, David? Um, I think there's equal pressure on both fighters. I think a lot of pressure on Josh is because of his team's actions in the past. The public spotlight is on it. I think Adam has said that he's the next, uh, he beat Kelly in Cannes and things like that. You make a bold statement. And, and you know, 
me and Adam have had some good chats here and there's respect now. So I'm not going to start calling him. Um, it's well documented the past. He understands. Um, but when your coach says them things, you've got to back it up and you put yourself in the spotlight. So Josh is in the spotlight because he's rated so highly. His performances haven't been as good as the speaking. So now everybody's questioning him, which I believe rightly so. So the pressure's fully on him. He's the home fighter. Um, the way they're talking in the camp, they're expected not David out and different things. Well, you know, you enjoy your pressure. We've got it. But, you know, it's business, in it? So, you know, I hope I've answered that as well as I could. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, you're... 100% confident in your man. We've said that. But do you believe, you know, as you you believe that Josh Kelly's going to get beat on Saturday? Do you believe that he's got the skills, the ability to rebuild, come back and eventually challenge for the title honours? Do you just believe that this David and Venetian fight is just at the wrong time for him? Yeah, I think it's too soon. Um, like I touched on before, I think he needed some other experience fights. Talented kid. I um, think he could, he could make David an hard night's work. But... I believe after six rounds, he'll, he'll slow. Um, as for rebuilding and different things, David could could take him out early if he wants stand and trade. He could take him out late if if he runs. But we will get to him. But rebuilding, you know, I, I believe Josh has got a comfortable life out of boxing. Some boxers, like David, recovered from a loss with fire in his belly. I don't know how Josh is going to recover. He is a talented kid. I think if he does come on stop, which I'm confident of. He needs taking back, taking out the spotlight and rebuilding. He's got all the skills. You know, there's no doubt in that. Um, I think it's just a bad match for him. And there's people around him who's accepted that match. And if I'm right, you know, some responsibility has got to be across the whole team, including the promoter. So, you know. Interesting. Interesting. Of course, there's the subplot as well. I put the tweet out there in the Simbox Twitter feed about the, the £1,000 bet between yourself and Mick Conlon, an interesting little subplot there. And I think the, the best aspect to that is that, you know, one way or another, there's going to be some money going towards charity. So hats off to both you guys for that. Yeah, big respect. It started out, um, Conlon had had a little poke at me um, on Twitter. But, you know, he's a, he's a great fighter. You know, you've got to respect him. He's got he's got his man's back. So I don't take it personal. You know, and I hope he doesn't take what I say personal because I've got my lad's back. And um, he, he tried to push me in a corner with a bet. So I said, let's do it for charity. But interesting, you know, um, last night we've doubled it, you know. So, right, and I'll let you as the exclusive and put it out. And um, I believe that £2,000, maybe try to bring Matt Truman in and say, well, they're for over grinding as well. You know, it, it might get, you know, a bit of positive response, but oh, it's now £2,000. He come over, we was in the uh, entertainment room, full of beans. You know, like he is. And he, uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll double it. He's calling his team. Well, come on, will you see this? No problem. Let's do it. You know? Fantastic. Yeah, you so know, it's, all, it's all for a good cause. So, you know, yeah, big that's, that's for, big thing, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, just before I leave you to the rest of your evening, Neil, a quick word on Robbie Davis Jr., of course. You know, he's on the undercard. He's got his big fight, uh, last-minute fight against Gabriel Valenzuela after the performance of Mauricio Lara last weekend against Josh Warrington. I'm sure that gives Robbie Davis, not that he needs it, but added impetus not to overlook this fight on Saturday. Yeah, we're, we're in two different... I'm, I'm glad you've asked about that because a lot of this is getting aimed at David and, and Kelly, which I understand it's the top of the bill. A um, couple of people's asked about Robbie, but um, he's, he's got a tough Mexican. But there's a difference in this than, than what the Warrington fight is. Is Warrington overlooked that kid. Warren Josh has had a fantastic career, and I've got no doubt he'll he'll, he'll come come again. And I think next time he'll beat the kid. Um, but with Robert, we've waited patiently for a good opportunity. The kid's tough. The kid's got a similar record, but they're not they're not the same person. Let's just remember that. And too many of the press can get caught up and say, "Oh, he's a Mexican. He's got a similar record." But this is an hungry Robbie Davis desperate to get back to the top. It's not a world champion who I believe has got a little bit complacent. This is Robbie, who I believe Dominic Ingle has done an unbelievable job with him. He's he, his mental capacity. Um, now Robbie is, is as good as I've ever seen. And he's ready. 
and then I'll put it out there. He's going to put a world class performance in. You know, I've seen it before. Um, before he joined Dom, I'd seen it once before. And, and, and Robbie, when he turned up against Sider Walker, too, if you've ever watched it. Yeah, of course. And I think sometimes he's loved the bravado, he's loved getting a turn up. And I just thought that, you know, all respect to his old coach, but he moved on. And, you know, I thought it was going to go to different coaches across the com- uh, country, the well known names. Like I know Dominic's well known, but the Booths and the McGuigans and different things. And we sat down, we discussed it. He asked me where I thought, I thought Dominic will utilize your skill set, um, counter punching, moving. And he hasn't done enough of it. Um, and I believe that this could potentially be the, the best performance of his life. And then we're going for Lewis Ritson. So, Lewis, if you're bothered watching us, come on, son, give us a rematch. You know, let's have it. You know, and I'm not barking at Lewis. He's a, he, 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 you know, as much as it was a very close fight and I thought we nicked it, he won the fight. We've got big respect and good luck, whatever he does. But we're here. We're going to keep barking. We're going to keep coming. So, yeah, I expect Robert. Um, the Mexican's going to be full of beans. He's going to come. He's going to come thinking, I'm going to do what Lara did. But Robbie's going to be calculated and execute a great game plan this night. So thanks for asking about Robbie. Yeah, no problem. Exciting times for Robbie Davis Jr. We look forward to it. Interesting that you should mention Lewis Ritson there. I was listening to the Matchroom radio show with David Diamante and Lewis Ritson was actually put forward to Josh Kelly as a future opponent. They want this big stadium fight in the Northeast. It's the first time I've ever heard anything of it, that, you know, Lewis Ritson might come up in weight to 147 to fight Josh Kelly at the Stadium of Light or St. James's Park. I just thought, well, you mentioned Lewis Ritson there, that, that's quite ironic given that your guy's in with Josh Kelly uh, in the main event on Saturday. Well, let me tell you something. This is aimed at Eddie. You can copy him in. You've got your little party planned. You've got little Lewis. And you've potential for Josh, and you've got now that would be a great big fight in Newcastle or oh, Sunderland. You know, I, it's it's a big derby, and uh, you've got Conor Ben lined up. What are you mentioning, David? We're no stepping stone. So Eddie, cancel your party because sat there, it's going to be a totally different kettle of fish. And I've not said that really on anywhere else. I think we've only said it once. So you know, we are not letting them parties happen. So cancel your plans. Start making us plans for what we're going to do with our little Russian. Neil, I think that's a perfect end to what's been a fascinating chat. I really appreciate your time, as I say. I'll give you the final word. What do you want to add to finish? Um, a huge thank you to the British public. Now, I've been in some big fights, around some decent name fighters. It's unbelievable how they've talked to us, how they've talked to our little Russian. You know, I think... All the fans realise we have been messed about. Don't even go over it. But it's phenomenal. We've had messages from London, from Newcastle, Sunderland, Manchester, Luton, Cambridge. If, if I had my phone, I'd just show you. And it's it's unbelievable. And I cannot believe it. And we, me and Carl don't normally pop our heads up. And this fight has, has made that happen. And you'll see that we'll quickly disappear and pull our heads back down because we don't want to be famous. Well, them fans of it's unbelievable. You can see it in me. It's flabbergasting. It's thank you to every one of you. And, Super. and tune in and watch the little Russian give his absolute all. Fantastic. You know? Neil, we really look forward to it. Thanks for your time tonight, buddy. Okay, pal. <laughs>